Roy Andalus from Effective TVs, and this is a presentation for 3ds Max 2019.3. We have a new active shade in the viewport, that's the biggest new feature, there is more, but I think that this is pretty exciting. For the first time, until now, active shade was a separate window. It's still possible to have it as a separate window, but now you can select active shade directly as your viewport. This means that you can render with everything, Arnold, Art, V-Ray, Corona. You can select your renderer on, on, as an active shade and use it as your viewport. But it's not only that. You can still see any helper, any camera, any light. You can still see wireframes in top of your geometry, in top of your render, basically. And it's something that not so many programs can do right now. That's very cool because it means that you can interact. Right now here you can see a thinking particles. I am tweaking thinking particles. I can still select anything. If I have a win, if I have any helper, I can still interact with my TP. But I see the final render with all the lighting. I can see shadows, reflections, refractions, motion blur. You can see everything. To activate it, you need to go to your active shade, select your renderer. And I will suggest that you use low settings, so to have a faster feedback. And on top of that, you can add optics. And optics will kick in at the end of the renderer to show a noisy free image. And you simply select it. Instead of having a realistic, you switch to active shade. And you will see your renderer and still any helper on top of that. So you can tweak lights, you can tweak colors. You can tweak any geometry. And I think that this will change a lot the way that we work with 3ds Max. In this case, you can model geometry uh, and see the final render. In this case, I am on Edit Poly, selecting a soft selection. Um, this model is super dense and you don't see it, but it's still rendering. And you can do any type of crazy things. Uh, I don't know what I am doing here, but well, uh, it's uh, some deforming. So you can work directly on your final render. And even you can um, create new uh, stuff on the fly. Uh, you can assign uh, materials directly. Before in Active Shade, you cannot uh, select objects. So you had to have your perspective open. Uh, move it there. See in another window your change. But here you have everything unified in the same viewport. You can select, you can drag and drop materials. You can rotate your view and see the final render. Add lights directly over your render. Any Anything that you can image, you get the point. Uh, people will compare this with Eevee. Eevee is pretty cool, but it's a real-time engine. This means it has some advantage and some disadvantage. Big advantage of EB is that it will be always real time, but the disadvantage is that the GI you need to fake it. Reflections will be a screen space reflections that can can be very good because it's real time, but you are always limited for that. Here you have your final render. Basically, it's a total different concept. I am not saying that this is better than EB. It's a different thing. Uh, if you need if you are a shading artist and you need to tweak your materials and find your final output needs to be Arnold or V-Ray, I think that this is the way to go. Basically, you see what your final render will be. Here you can see ray trace and how changing um, you will get any ray trace effect that you want. You can have blurry reflection, refractions. At the end, it's a final render. There is no limitation. And in low settings or in low uh, low resolution geometry and not so much shadings, your result is almost real time as you can see here. But as soon as you start having complex shadings and bigger resolutions uh, or a lot of refractions, reflections, obviously it will not be real time anymore. You can tweak your parameters, obviously. But if you're a shading artist, normally you work with an isolation, isolated view of your object and you work there. 
then you switch to your final uh, image. So I think it's very good in a lot of cases. Mm, for all lighting artists, is a very good way to work. I am doing different things here. I recorded that. Uh, you will see motion blur and everything. More things in 2019.3 is that we have a better Revit imports. So if you work with Revit, you will have it's faster. There is way more options. As well, there is improvements on OSL. OSL on viewport has been improved. So now it's much closer to the final render. But again, sometimes I don't know now. In the past, we had problems, for example, with noises. Noise map in the perspective was different than your final noise in the render. But since now you can activate the active shade and display your final render on the viewport, we will not have any more of these kind of problems. If you enable motion blur and you animate any object, you can see motion blur directly on your viewport. And I think that this is pretty cool. Right now, there is no UI to create region render, but it's possible. You need to use a max script. There is a function in max script to drag and drop and create your own region render. Very useful if your render is very slow and you only want to render a specific part. I will write the this max script on the comments if you are interested and i guess that they will incorporate this on the next update on the ui there are more advantages of using the render itself while you are working here for example i use round corners it's a new shader in arnold basically create a round corner if your mesh is totally um, hard edge it will fake the normals on the boom map and it will look like it's chamfer, but without needing to deal with chamfer mesh. Since it's not a mesh, it was impossible to see it before on the normal viewport, but now that we have the renderer itself, we can see it. This is very useful as well if you use with work with forest pack. You can render now the final render with forest pack, all the distribution, all the scattering or if you use uh, as files, now you can see them actually. Active Shade is using the actual viewport resolution. If you use a 4K monitor, this can be a problem. But at least in Arnold, you can use in options, you can write XRES your resolution, YRES your resolution, and doesn't matter your viewport size, it will always render at this resolution. Here I am using 300 by 300 and Arnold will use always this. So that's all. I hope that you like this new active shade on viewport. I love it. I think will change how we work in 3ds Max. Uh, please like the video, subscribe if you love it, and write me a comment and let me know what do you think. Thank you so much, guys, and see you soon.